Hey guys, how's it going? Crane here. Today I'm going to give you guys a bunch of card reviews from the upcoming Kobolds and Catacombs expansion. I've been meaning to do this video for a while now, but uh, just today I think I'm able to. I've had some issues with my voice in the last week or so, so I'm behind here. I got like 30 some cards for you guys to review. So uh, put your butt in that chair and watch because it's going to be a long ride. So a lot of interesting and crazy cards out this week. Uh, to kick it off, we had Twig of the World Tree. Uh, this is one of the most interesting and important cards that I have seen so far from the Kobolds and Catacombs expansion because it actually counters weapon removal, kind of, more or less. So. Um, just so we're clear on how the card works, it's a 4 mana druid legendary weapon, it's a 1-5, and when you lose the weapon, so if you lose it by your opponent oozing it, or if you lose it by attacking 5 times, or if you lose it by replacing it with a different weapon, you gain 10 mana crystals. So you just shoot up to 10, you can use them right away, and that's really insane because the card costs 4 mana. And we know how powerful druid can be when you have an unfair mana advantage, right? This is a really, really good card. And <clears throat> um, one of the main ways that some people thought of using it is you play this on curve or wherever, and then if you have Medivh on eight, you can play Medivh. Medivh's weapon overwrites this one, instantly killing it. Then you have 10 mana, you can play like an ultimate infestation, uh, draw a bunch of cards, get a 10-10 from the Medivh weapon, you get the Medivh for the turn, it's just it's absolute madness. There's also some really crazy combos, so for instance, um, we've seen in the past Malagos Druids, one turn kill Malagos Druids, it's really easy to do with a weapon like this, but in that case, Ooze does actually counter the weapon. So, for instance, if it was turn 9 or 10, you can play a card like Malagos, then you could swing with the weapon with the last charge and giving you a refresh on your mana, and then you play really broken spell power infused spells and kill your opponent that way. So, But if your opponent oozes that, obviously it does actually counter the combo. So it, it's super power card, uh, probably going to see play in some way, shape, or form. But what I really like about it is the fact that it does actually counter oozes in a meaningful and interesting way. So um, my main issue with every class getting a slow high mana cost legendary weapon in this upcoming expansion is that that's exactly what oozes are meant to counter. Oozes don't actually counter things like Pirate Warrior very well because um, it's not a very efficient card to play on curve and you typically just lose anyway. It just helps a little bit. Ooze is really good against cards like Gore Howl, cards like Doom Hammer, and basically what that means is Oozes are going to be very good against every one of the legendary weapons that's coming up, except this one. So it's, it's a nice way. I certainly don't think it's enough to deter people from using a hell of a lot of oozes, especially now that we have many more ways to destroy weapons than, you know, back when Gore Howl and Doomhammer were being played in the meta. So there's a lot of problems with oozes. I'm glad that this solves some of that, but we need more Blizzard. Rummaging Kobold, um, three mana, one, three, return one of your destroyed weapons to your hand. So this is pretty weak, um, just because a lot of the time when you play Hearthstone, you have to play things on curve. On curve, this is a really bad, like, two drop. It's an okay one drop, but it costs three. That's so rough. So um, the main way that this would work is if you have some really important weapons. Maybe there's some kind of graveyard mechanic with weapons. It's not really a counter to ooze, because let's say you play a weapon for, like, five mana. If it gets oozed, you, you lost that five mana. You may have gained an attack, so you know maybe you only lost like three or four mana. Then you have to play this, which is another three. Then you have to play the weapon again. So tempo-wise, it's absolute carnage with the oozes. And while this gives you the value of the weapon back, the tempo is so lost that I don't think it's really good enough in that regard. I'm curious if it works with the Medivh weapon, because you know that is a weapon that generates incredible value. So, you know, I don't think it's a completely hopeless card, but it certainly looks like one. Zola the Gorgon, neutral legendary, choose a friendly minion, add a golden copy of it to your hand. So, pretty cool card. 
it allows you to play something multiple times, trigger the battlecraft something multiple times. I immediately compared the card to Youthful Brewmaster. I think for a combo deck, it's actually worse than Youth Youthful Brewmaster because the uh, the combo decks typically heavily rely on the battle cry effects and being able to trigger those effects for one mana less uh, is a lot better. But for everything else, uh, Zola is pretty damn good. Um, getting that much value, picking the value, is worth more than a card draw. So it's it's like three mana, two, two, draw a card, plus, plus. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. Uh, but I don't know if it's quite constructed good. It just depends on how the meta is going to work out. You know, if if those dirty Razakas priests are still around, getting another Kazakas, getting another this or that, I think that might be uh, a valuable card to put in. Spiteful Summoner, 6 mana, 4-4. Four, four. Reveal a spell from your deck and summon a random minion with the same cost. So you can manipulate this pretty heavily. Uh, but it's not something that we've actually tested before because we've never had the need to. So we don't actually know how well a mage can perform if it only runs like Flame Strike and Fire Lands Portal and maybe Pyroblast, right? We don't know how well that'll perform. So the, the power level of this card really is how much of a cost is it to stack your deck to make this card useful. Um, it might just be played as is. Uh, if the average mana cost of a spell is like four to five mana, uh, I think that's pretty fair for a lot of you know traditional style mage decks, for instance. Then it might just be pretty good. Yeah, you might land on a two mana, but you know on average the random effect landing on a seven or maybe even higher is going to make this card better than something like Faceless Summoner, which was good enough for constructed play. It being a neutral card makes this test for every single class which means there's going to be a lot of experimentation. There's a lot of um, fun activities that Hearthstone players will have trying to make this card work. Whether or not it works in the end, I think it might be pretty good. Um, that adventure um, is something I very much appreciate. So even though it's a heavily random, heavy high roll card, um, I like that it creates a lot of content for us Hearthstoners. Next up, we have Seeping Oozling. Six mana, five, four. Battlecry, gain the death rattle of a random minion in your deck. So um, if we look at some of the other cards that are available with death rattles, particularly from the Kobolds expansion, there are a few, you know, gaining the death rattle of the uh, new Hunter Legendary that summons a beast from your deck. It can be pretty good. Um, what I thought was a pretty interesting death rattle of existing cards is Sergeant Sally. So if this could blow up for five damage, everything your opponent has when it dies. That's really good. Um, overall, though, it seems the power level is pretty low, so it's probably not worth making a deck you know, with this card, especially because the draw order might completely nullify the powerful effects that it might have. So it's a bit of a clunky one, and it's Hunter, and we know clunky cards have not traditionally worked very well in Hunter, but who knows? Um, maybe one or two more very good candidates might be revealed in the upcoming weeks for Kobolds and Catacombs, which might make the card a lot stronger than it seems right now. Lone Champion. Uh, three cost, two, four, neutral, and it gets Taunt and Divine Shield. You have no other minions so uh, that's really strong it's a really strong effect uh, pretty decent in control decks that don't typically have a lot of minions but even then it's not too bad you know I I was thinking if I'm playing like a zoo deck with this is it bad not really a lot of the time you can trade your minions off and then clean your own board and then get started again with this card and this card is you know very efficient if you can start the board with it. And if you're winning by a landslide, you typically don't need Taunt anyway. So it's a pretty high power level card. Um, you know, Constructed is filled with high power level unfair cards. So the competition's pretty stiff, but I think it might make it in a deck or two. I do think it's going to be a pretty big factor in Arena, um, but it's not gonna have a good effect in Arena because with anything that's really powerful and has Divine Shield, it makes classes like um, Rogue, Druid, and mage stronger than the others, and those are generally already the strongest classes. Silver Vanguard, seven mana, three, three death rattle, recruit an eight cost minion. So 
Uh, yeah. Why pay eight when you can pay seven and you get a three three, right? Pretty interesting. It's in the uh, common slot, so you might see this in arena a lot, which might make the eight mana cost minions have a bit of extra value. The way I see it, it's kind of like a Skelemancer. Uh, it's very similar to the power level of a Skelemancer. The main advantage that it has over a Skelemancer is that uh, you can potentially combo with a specific eight cost minion. Now, I can't think of one off the top of my head, but you know, let's just say hypothetically, all right, Gromash, for instance. So let's say you're playing a sudden Genesis Gromash OTK deck. You could actually get it off with a Silver Vanguard by paying seven, and then next turn killing it off, essentially playing a zero mana cost Gromash. The downside of that is the deck will probably suck, and the other downside is it might get silenced, it's a bit inconsistent, you might draw Gromash before you draw either Silver Vanguard. There's a lot of clunkiness attached to it. Uh, that doesn't mean it won't see any play, but it does mean it probably won't see any play. Uh, it's a mostly interesting card for Arena, uh, upping the value of 8 drops, just kind of like randomly. Seems pretty interesting. So Raven Familiar is a pretty interesting card. 2 mana, 2-2, two, two, Mage Beast. Uh, you reveal a spell in each deck, and if yours costs more, you draw it. So that's pretty cool. It seems like it works with some of the other high mana cost spell conditions that we've seen so far in other Kobolds and Catacombs cards, but I think it actually doesn't work that well with it, because there's not that many high mana cost spells that you actually want to put in a deck. So if you're running, for instance, three spells just to stack these type of effects, let's say you have two Raven Familiars in your opening hand. Do you want to siphon off two of them so then potentially you might draw and have no spells left in your deck? It, it's going to require some fine-tuning. It's certainly a very efficient and powerful card. You also get the information from seeing what spell your opponent has, but, you know, traditionally, in the last few years of Hearthstone, if you know your opponent's uh, class, you can probably guess at least 28 cards from their deck, so not a lot of information, but some is pretty interesting. It being in the common slot means it's going to be played a lot in Arena, and yeah, I think it's a good card, so mages are on the upswing again. Unidentified Maul is the card that I revealed. It has the uh, imprinted effect on the draw. Uh, just to quickly go over it again, you can get Divine Shield, you can get a bunch of dudes, you can get uh, a couple dudes at least. Uh, you can get a plus one attack permanently, uh, or you can get Taunt on everything. Some of those effects are really crushing, and with marginal tempo battles, some of those crushing effects will absolutely win you games. So, for instance, um, you know, you might just not be able to kill every single minion on your opponent's side of the board when you're trying to, like, you know, face race. And then he might be sitting on a give all of your minions divine shield on the battle cry mall. And then you might lose instantaneously. So, it, it's a very high impact card, potentially. And I think we'll see a bit of this in all the game modes. Grumble the World Shaker. Six mana, seven, seven Shaman Elemental. The battle cry returns your other minions to your hand, and they cost one. So that's pretty crazy. Um, typically, if you've played a lot of your minions, um, there isn't a lot of value to uh, play them again because Shaman is such a high tempo class. But there are a few minions that are extremely valuable when played again. One that comes to mind, just so you guys can see the value of this effect, is Doppelgangster. Doppelgangster is played in Evolve Shaman. Each of the three Doppelgangsters, um, I believe, has the effect. So basically, you play Doppelgangster on five, you play this on six, and then you have three one mana doppelgangsters. So on a following turn, you could do like doppel doppel evolve 
for three mana, which is completely insane, right? Um, yes, you lose the, the tempo, but if you can gain it back in a really big way, it seems like that can work. We've seen the proof of concept with Evolve Shaman, so I imagine this is a really powerful card. You might be thinking, you know, combos with like Malagos and that kind of stuff, but now that's a little bit out there. Um, I think it'll have to be more of the doppelganger mid-range style minions that are going to make it through um, with synergies with Grumble. Grizzled Guardian, new Druid Taunt, 8 mana, 3, 5 Taunt. Whoa, that's like 4 mana, 5 mana, maybe more than 5 mana. You know, we have Tar Creeper these days. So that costs 5 mana more than it should. But wait, when it dies, you recruit 2 minions that cost 4 or less. And when I looked at that effect, I'm like, wow, that's really good. But then, we, uh, actually on stream, we even looked up the minions that are decent with this effect. And there really aren't any. Um, yeah, you know, there's like Senjin and stuff, but you wouldn't play Senjin in your deck because that would make your deck a lot worse. You can only pick cards that would actually be good in your deck as standalone minions. Then maybe this card would be worth it. And the main things that we came up with were Tar Creepers. Uh, Tar Creeper uh, is probably the best card in the four or less category, despite it costing three, just because it's so good on the the three mana costs compared to the others. So with that in mind, it's not terrible, but it's not broken. And if it's not broken, we're probably not seeing a whole lot of this. King Tog Waggle. So this card had us thinking and talking quite a lot. Uh, it's eight mana, five, five neutral legendary and the battle cry swaps the deck, swap both decks and you put a ransom uh, in your opponent's deck and ransoms a five mana cost spell that swaps them back. So um, you guys can imagine all the crazy stuff that's possible with this. In terms of viable combo decks, the craziest stuff that I've heard is in the milled druid category. So if you're playing a druid deck with an insane amount of draw, you can get to a point in the deck, maybe you can even use banshees just to discard the rest of your deck and accelerate the draw. If you can get to zero cards in your deck, it's possible to um, get your opponent to 10 cards, then play King Togwaggle, steal his deck, and give him yours that has no cards in it. So hypothetically, very hypothetically here, let's imagine that the opponent has six cards in hand. You can play Naturalize, Naturalize, get him to 10 cards, then you play King Togwaggle, uh, you get his deck, he gets nothing because you play this when you have no deck left. He gets a ransom in his deck, which is now the only card, but because he's at 10, when his turn starts, he's going to mill the ransom and he's not going to be able to switch back. So that's the idea. Um, it's possible to uh, push someone to mill even if they have no hand at all. Uh, because of the new Druid Legendary weapon. So uh, if, if you're at 10 and you have the last tick on the weapon, it's possible to do like Cold Light, Cold Light, um, Panda Cold Light. I think you need an Innervate for that. Yeah, okay. There's probably a few other things I'm forgetting, but it's possible. It's possible. You can get your opponent from zero cards to 10. It's possible to do that. Uh, whether you want to or not, I don't know, but Seems cool. I'd definitely try it. Benevolent Jin. Paladin card, 3 mana, 2, 4, elemental. At the end of your turn, restore 3 health to your hero. So um, the card, if it wasn't an elemental, would just be just not really good enough for these days. But end of turn effects are really good. And I think if you somehow find a reason to use elementals in a Paladin deck, uh, this would be one of the first elementals you'd want to include, so it's not bad at all. Um, in terms of Arena, it being a common card, we're going to see a lot of it, and I think it's going to help Paladin use weapons a lot more than it has in the past. We know that weapons have recently received their own occurrence boost in the drafting process. Paladin has a lot of weapons, Paladin's getting more weapons, so Paladin's will be able to get more value, more tempo out of their weapons and counterbalance that with a whole bunch of benevolent gins, which they're very likely to draft. 
Temporus, the priest legendary. Oh man, this is an interesting one. So it's a dragon, seven mana, six six, pretty crap stats. Um, battle cry: Your opponent takes two turns, and then you take two turns. Wow, crazy stuff, right? So basically, a lot of people, the meme is you play this and you lose the game, and yeah, that's probably going to happen a decent bit. But uh, in Hearthstone, it's not. It's not the soul-crushing losses. It's not the dominant wins. It's the probability of the effects. So if this card is lose the game 40% of the time, win the game 60% of the time, it's actually a really good card. And I think those percentages are pretty representative of the effect. So I think it is actually a decent card. And the reason I think that is because of a few reasons. So um, you, you can choose to play this card in a decent defensive situation where you have a few taunts and stuff. Priest outside of the new Shadow Reaper Rizakas garbage is a really good control deck, but it fails to have a finishing move. That's the weakness of Priest, and this is a really good finishing move. So, you know, it's actually pretty decent in that regard. The other consideration is that um, it's a lot more mana efficient to clear a board than it is to build one. So, for instance, um, you know, if you have two consecutive turns, how much power can you put over two turns? Well, you can do like, you, let's say you can do four five drops, you know. So your opponent plays two five drops, he attacks with them, doesn't quite kill you. Then he plays two more five drops, right? Like, wow, it's pretty, pretty efficient. You had 20 mana, he used 20 mana, multiple cards, decent tempo, good value, right? Well, you know, you could just play Doomsayer and then you just let it go off and then... You use two mana versus their 20 mana. So because you get the two turns second, it's a lot easier to clean up the board that your opponent build and build your next board if you need to do that. So um, if your opponent doesn't have a lot of burst, it's a card that can be used defensively, is, is what I'm saying. It's very flexible, very cool. And I absolutely don't think it is a write-off as most people seem to believe. Lesser Ruby Spellstone. I think this is the worst card in the expansion. Um, so you add one random mage spell to your hand. And if you play two elementals, you add two. If you play three, it's at its maximum. And you add three random mage spells to your hand, which is essentially... A two mana Cabalist Tome. So the reason why I think this is a card that shouldn't exist is because it's either not going to work with elementals, so it's a card nobody's going to play. Nobody's going to play an arena either. It's just going to be bad. So either nobody plays it, or the whole spell generation elemental combo does actually work really well. And then you have people playing high power level, extremely random mage decks. And who wants that? That's crap. Nobody wants that. So um, this is easily the most disappointing card of the whole expansion so far. Uh, just because there's nothing good that can come out of it. It's only like disaster situations. Like, you know, we know that after an expansion, people find a deck... And that's what everyone plays. So, you know, if 50% of the decks you're going to play one week after this expansion launches is Spell Generation Mage because of this card, trust me, you're not going to be happy. So the fact that's actually a possibility is really dumb. Explosive Runes. We got a new Mage Secret. So after your opponent plays a minion, it deals 6 damage to it and any excess to their hero. So pretty good. Pretty good card. Um, the legendary mage weapon is one that forcefully draws three cards every turn at the end of turn, I believe, and three extra cards. And that is going to lead people to play, I believe, uh, burn slash tempo mages. And one of the powerful ways to play tempo mages is by playing, uh, discounted secrets. So this is a pretty good secret. Uh, mages have had a lot of powerful discounts to secrets but they haven't had many secrets 
that generate a lot of tempo in the early game. And this actually does that. So um, this just removes a minion that they're going to play in the early game. And it in the late game, it might even hit your opponent in the face. It's also doubling up as burnt. So it's a high value secret and potentially burnt. So very, very good combo. Very powerful secret. I think we will see a decent bit of this card if the Tempo Mage deck works out. Lesser Pearl Spellstone. Uh, two mana, two, two, taunt. And then if you restore three health, you upgrade it. Uh, restoring three health is a bit of a challenge unless you're playing the new Elemental that I just reviewed uh, two minutes in the past. You can scroll back the video if you don't remember what I'm talking about. Um, I thought this card was really good because I thought the upgraded versions would summon more minions with taunt. So I thought that if you upgrade it once, it'd be two minions with taunt, two to each. Um, but it's not. It it gives you just a bigger taunt minion. So if you upgrade it once, it's a 4-4 four, four taunt. If you upgrade it twice, it's a 6-6 six, six taunt. And that's not particularly strong, um, but it's not bad. The reason why it's not bad is because um, the two mana 2-2 two, two taunt is pretty good. Uh, if you're in top deck mode and have no way to activate it, it's probably one of the best spell stones. So the baseline effect is one of the best, and I think that's why it's actually going to be a pretty decent card. Rogue Legendary, 3 mana, 2-2, two, two, after a friendly minion dies, add a 1-1 one, one copy of it to your hand, and it costs 1, it costs 1, no, oh, sorry, that was 1, of 1, wow. So we've played Tavern Brawls with that, and you typically uh, include a lot of uh, broken cards, um, a lot that have very powerful battle cry effects, uh, a lot of legendaries, uh, things like Bone Mirror are going to be very good. <clears throat> it's just that... The way that I see that Rogue plays its games, um, if you have a decently sized board, you're typically in a situation where you're going face. So as good as this card is, it requires, a, I think, a new style of Rogue deck. And I don't remember a meta where people actually play different types of Rogue. There's always like one good Rogue deck. So I don't know, I just don't see trading minions as a big thing in Rogue. Uh, it's like, this effect is so good, but even still, I just don't see that being the case. So uh, I guess time will tell, and I could be very wrong about this card. And then we have Arcane Art Artificer. Artificer, I think. One mana, one, two elemental. When you cast the spell, gain armor equal to its cost. So. That is really, really cool. The main reason why this card is good is because the one thing Mage has really struggled with in the past is gaining enough health to stall the game to its infinite combos. Um, like, Mages are running crap like Ice Barrier just to kind of make it a little bit further in the game. So I think a card like this is just honestly better than a lot of those options. Now, it could be the case that a lot of the spell-centric control mage decks won't work out in the meta, so we won't ever see this card again. But uh, I think it's pretty powerful. I think it would actually possibly carry the archetype. Uh, it's a must-kill card, it's a one-drop, and it's an elemental, and it's common, so we'll see it a bit in Arena. In Arena, HP pools generally don't matter as much, so it's a bit weaker there, but We'll see. Might even be surprised in that regard. Arcane Tyrant. 5 mana, 4-4 four, four elemental. It costs 0 if you've cast a spell that costs 5 or more this turn. So um, if you're running any decently heavy spells, this card is just really good. Uh, a lot of decks don't run 5 mana cost or higher spells, but some decks run a lot of them, like Druid. So, you know... A lot of the time, if you're playing Druid, you're playing Nourish as soon as you can possibly play it, either Ramp or Draw. So if you're Ramping or Drawing, would you want a free 4-4 four, four that turn? Yeah, you, you actually kind of would. You really would want that. So, um, really good card. I think, I think it's good enough to see play outside of decks that strive for Elemental Synergy which might make other cards that require elemental synergy also standard once again in these decks. We'll see. Grand Archivist, 8 mana, 4, 7 at the end of your turn. 
Cast the spell from your deck. Targets chosen randomly. No oh boy. I don't know why they make crap like this. I don't know. I don't know if it consumes the card. If the only spell you have in your deck is Flame Strike and it doesn't consume the card, it just Flame Strikes at the end of every turn, that'd be really busted and that would actually make the card good. Uh, I don't know. I guess scared when I see cards with that much randomness. Psychic Scream. Uh, priest card, 7 mana, shuffle all minions into your opponent's deck. So this is pretty insane. Um, uh, you can kind of compare it to Vanish, but not really, because they go back to your opponent's deck, uh, not their hand. Um, it's also a Priest card. Priest uh, has traditionally been a, a class that tries to stall as much as possible. Now, having a card disadvantage is pretty bad, but right now with Rizaka's Priest, that doesn't matter. You don't care if you have a card disadvantage, you just want to stall the game. So this card is just busted absolutely broken with uh, Rizaka's Priest being what it is. Now, if if Shadow Reaper Anduin wasn't a thing, I think this card would still be really good because I think it's comparable to Twisting Nether and Twisting Nether sees play at 8 mana. The other reason why I think this card is quite a bit better than Twisting Nether in its effect in the general case is because a lot of the time you're not playing control versus control. A lot of the time you're playing uh, as priest control versus aggro decks. Aggro decks, aggressive decks, tempo decks, hybrid decks, whatever the hell you want to call them, they're aggressive decks. And they plague the latter uh, at a very high majority uh, in the entire existence of Hearthstone. So um, a lot of these decks rely on having uh, small minions in the early to mid game and rely on drawing big minions in the late game because otherwise they run out of cards. So um, with a card like this, if you're shuffling one drops and two drops back into their deck, their draws are actually considerably worse. And like if you're playing a face hunter and you know it's like turn eight and you have no cards in hand and you draw like an alley cat, you just lost the game. So uh, this card in a lot of ways is a lot better than Twisting Nether. Just the effect is a lot better than Twisting Nether. And it's seven mana. And it's for a class that can stabilize a lot better. That now has a lot of more combos. That is a lot stronger. So this card is just busted. It's just busted. I don't think they should make this cost seven mana. But too late, I guess. Uh, bow to our priest overlords. Hoarding Dragon. Four mana, five, six. Common is pretty interesting. Uh, it'll make the Arena Dragon synergy a lot more consistent. I like that. Uh, Death Rattle, give your opponent two coins, allows you to mill them a little bit sometimes, which is pretty funny, but uh, typically I won't do that. Uh, I think it's a good card uh, because on turn four, this will beat just about everything. So while you give your opponent two coins and you might see this card as like a six mana, five, six, which is not good, you can't really see it that way because when you play it on curve, unless it gets removed by like a fireball, it's going to kill anything your opponent played. So if this kills a Yeti-like minion, just because your opponent gets a refund of two coins, doesn't matter all that much. In terms of constructed play, I think this card is pretty interesting, but probably not going to meet the bar. Um, aggressive decks routinely run just the high statted clunker finisher, uh, namely Fell Reaver, Hydras, that kind of stuff. I don't think the stats are quite high enough to crush your opponent. It's also the fact that when you're up against the slower deck as an aggressive deck, giving your opponent two coins will usually lose you the game because in Constructed, a control deck, all it really tries to do is get to a certain level in mana where it can dominate the game. So giving your opponent two coins in a constructed match is a hell of a lot worse than giving your opponent two coins in an arena match. So uh, a bit clunky and constructed, but I don't know. Wouldn't be surprised if it made the cut anyway. Falderay Strider, epic rogue minion, four mana, four, four, and you shuffle three ambushes into your deck when drawn some to four, four spider. You still draw the other card, by the way. So, so you can play this, and then it can trigger on three in a row, and then you can draw your regular card next turn. So it's kind of like a four mana 16, 16 with a delayed effect. 
which is really insane, really, really insane. It's another one on this line of absolutely crazy rogue cards, but again, we don't really see it fitting particularly well in any given archetype. Um, so, I don't know. Rogue does a lot of crazy stuff. I'm sure we'll see some of these cards. I think we'll see this one just because it's so good and so efficient, but you never know with Rogue. Uh, it could be that just Miracle Rogue is the next meta Rogue deck, and all these cards are going to be on hold for like three or four expansions later. Void Lord, uh, Warlock, Demon, Minion, Taunt. 9 mana, 3 9 taunt. Death Rattle summons 3 1 3 games of Void Walkers. You get 3 Void Walkers when it dies. It's a lot of taunt. That's 18 health worth of taunt. If you add up the stats, it's the stats of 3 Void Walkers, so it's kind of cool and clever in that. But I just don't know if it's worth it. 9 mana is kind of like the pits of hell of Hearthstone, where 9 mana cards are always worse than 10 mana cards, but you can almost never do anything with that extra mana. So 9 mana cards, just bad 10 drops, basically. And this kind of follows suit. It's all right. I think if it was 8 mana, it'd see some play. But if it was 8 mana, it wouldn't have, like, the whole 3 thing going on. And it'd trigger some people, of course. So whatever. Um, who knows? Could be the case that Warlocks really, really, really need Taunt. And people are not running Silence for whatever reason. Uh, so sure, I guess. I don't know. I don't really see it, though. Hungry Etten. This is a card I do see. It's a 6 mana, 4 10 taunt. The Balakrai summons a random 2 cost minion for your opponent. So, again, the random thing, there's a lot of random stuff with kobolds. I don't really get that. I don't know why kobolds have to be so random. Like, I got that in GVG with goblins and gnomes because they have experiments. Sometimes they work out, sometimes they don't. Whoa, crazy kooky stuff. Why are kobolds more random than that? I don't know. Whatever. Uh, this card is really good. Uh, four attack is going to wreck some priests. The battle cry spawning a random two-cost minion. We're going to have the whole Doomsayer fiasco all over again. But in general, I think it is a really powerful card. The average case for this card is that it's a really powerful card. Most two drops do like 2.3 damage. So it's like a six mana, four, seven point seven health. Is that good? That's very good. Um, <clears throat> the battle cry can be used as an advantage. A lot of decks that would play a card like this would consider playing a card like Mind Control Tech. And in the past, I've used Mind Control Tech in combination with Leroy just to steal some of their minions when they were actually playing around Mind Control Tech. So Hungry Enten is going to be able to synergize with Mind Control Tech pretty well. Uh, four versus three minions is actually a pretty big difference. A lot of the time when you're playing against tempo decks like Rogue, they're going to they're gonna have three minions, but four is a lot rarer. So because you can combo with MC Tech, I think it's going to add value to this card because, again, decks that want to run a card like this will also want to consider running Mind Control Tech. So very powerful stuff. Call to Arms. Recruit three minions that cost two or less. Uh, there are some pretty powerful two-cost cards. Um, I also like the aspect of reducing um, the two-cost minions from your deck. I think this can be a very good card. I don't know what the ideal situation is, but the power level of this card is very high. So, um, you know, when you're opening your hand, you want to have one drop, two drop, three drop. But, you know, later on, you don't want to draw those cards. So the fact that you just empty your deck and then you draw your Tyrians, your, you know, um, Bulwars. Yeah, something like that later on. That's ideal. Bound Legendaries, huh? Well, this is another one. Lynessa Sunsorrow. Never heard of her. But uh, interesting. Seven mana, one, one. So when you're playing against Shaman and they do... Um, doppelgangster into Shaman Death Knight to evolve plus two. The new nightmare is three Lynessa Sun Sorrows. They can actually evolve into three one ones. That's hilarious. Um, this card is on a high, really high power level. If you've played one Spike Ridge Steed, I think this card is value. Um, if this was a seven mana Spike Ridge in mind, 
If it was a 7 mana, 3, 7 taunt, when it dies, spawn a 2, 6 taunt. I think that's good enough for 7 mana. So uh, it's ridiculous. It's just contingent on how many people are running silence. And if it's a decent number of the decks out there, then this card is going to be absolute garbage. So um, who knows? Who knows? Really, really good card, really high power level, but possibly, possibly quite worthless. Kobold, Hermit, 2 mana, 1 1, Battlecry, choose a basic totem and summon it. They're like, oh, okay, that's pretty good, right? You can choose spell damage and it's on 2 minions. That's actually very good. Primal Talisman, uh, 3 mana, give your minions death rattle, summon a random basic totem. Okay, sure, pretty good. Why would you want all of that? Well, it's because of this card. 5 mana, 5 5, Battlecry, if you control all 4 basic totems, summon Alakir, the Windlord. 5 mana, 5 5. So if you just need to play this desperately on curve, you could definitely do that and not feel too bad about it. But if you can get this and Alakir for five, <laughs> that's a win condition on turn five. That's actually a win condition. So that is extremely powerful. Volgar, Homunculus, two mana, two, four, taunt, Battlecraft, deal two damage to your hero, demon. Um, pretty high power level card. Um, yeah, I think losing two health for the extra little bit of power is just fine. It's a pretty good card. And then we have the one mana 2-1 battle cry draw card, deal two damage to your hero. This card's really nuts. This card is just crazy power level. It's going to be crazy in arena. Oh my god, you're going to see decks with like five of these, and they're just going to be dropping them with flame imps and getting getting their own hero to like 8 health, but then it's going to be like turn 5 and you're getting swarmed down and dead. So yeah, it's going to get pretty crazy. And they are to fuel this card, the Amethyst Spellstone. Uh, 4 mana, deal 3 damage to a minion. Uh, it upgrades to 5 and then 7, so it does not have a linear uh, structure to the evolving Spellstone in this case, and that kind of sucks actually. Um, if you evolve it once, so uh, if you just take damage by playing one of the two prior cards I just showed you, uh, it's basically a holy fire on a minion for four. And that's pretty good. It's a pretty good card. Uh, I don't think it's good enough to see play in like zoo decks and stuff, so it's going to be a bit complicated to see how it works in non-zoo warlock decks, but again, quite an adventure to see how that will work out. And then the last card I have to show for you guys is Cataclysm. Uh, destroy all minions discard your hand. Um, this card is really interesting because it actually does work very well with the uh, one warlock quest and two the silver golems. Um, you guaranteed discard the silver golems. Um, I forget what it's called but the legendary from Angoro that gets bigger every time it's discarded. So yeah wow this might be uh, something that enables you to successfully play the Warlock quest. How insane is that? Overall, it's been pretty crazy uh, to review these cards. Um, it looks pretty good. I think we're going to have a lot of fun. I do have some concerns for the overall health of the game after the expansion rolls out in regards to weapon removal and silence but uh, and randomness. But we'll have to see. And one thing we know for sure is the first few weeks of playing around with these cards is going to be really exciting. I hope you guys enjoyed my review, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.